Hi, hi everyone, another video. Um, this time, uh, entertainment system, Range Rover Evoke. So, if I start it up, you'll be able to see what it's doing. So it's got two faults, this one. See the um, audio video is greyed out. Um, you can't pair a phone to it. And the sat nav, when you hit the sat nav, it just says initializing. So these are the faults on this one. So the first thing that I did was test the optical bus, which I've actually put back together now. Um, so you pop off this trim here, now that little trim down there, this trim here, and that uncovers the bolts that hold this on. And then there's a trim down there, and there's two bolts behind that. And then this cover, you pop it off from the bottom and then lift it off at the top. That takes this piece out as well. And then behind there, you're left with a screen. If you then just take the four screws out of the screen, which are Torx 20, on the back, you'll see the optical bus. Pop the optical bus connector out and you'll see the red flashing light coming out of the unit. Now, that's the output and it goes round in a loop round all the modules and then back in. So then, slide out the return from the connector plug it back in and then you should see the flashing light on the return. If you don't see the flashing light on the return, you've got a break in the optical bus and you need to go round and do the same on each module in the loop until you find the one that isn't giving the output. Now on this one, the optical bus was okay. Um, so then another thing I did notice was when I was driving it, like forwards and back in the yard, there was a sloshing noise coming from the passenger side, which initially I thought was in the door, because um, sometimes the door drains block up in general on vehicles. Uh, but this one wasn't. It seemed like it was coming from under the floor. So I've roughly put a couple of bits back together just to make it, um, you know, see what comes out. So the first thing you need to take out is this trim here which is like the seal plate. So that pops off. Careful when you pop it off, um, because most of them are illuminated. So you've got like a, a little clip there, which goes in and then like a plug. So just pop those out. When I took that out, I could already see there was bits of water on there. Uh, then you've got four of E12. So that's the socket you'll need to take out the four seat bolts, which are there. So they're the seat bolts. Let's just turn that off actually. So you take out, take out the front ones with the seat right back, put the seat all the way forwards, take out the rear bolts, and then you've got three plugs, which you just need to pop out the bottom of the seat. Here's the seat over here. So if we lift that up, You'll see that's where the plugs are on the bottom of the seat. And then just carefully lift the seat out. Then on this one, it's a nice easy carpet because it's sided, it's not one complete carpet for the whole car. So you've got a little clip there. So just pop that little clip out. And then just feed the carpet out. Careful of that trim. You don't have to actually take that off. You can get that around that and then pop that carpet out. You can see the underside of that is soaking wet. So then you can see we've got a little goldfish bowl going on in there. And then the back section of the carpet, you can just lift up so it's out of the way, just for now anyway. And then there'll be one little clip there onto that. So pop that off. As you can see, all the wiring and everything's quite wet. Four 10 mil bolts, hold this little plate on. So then you pop that off. You don't need to remove that air vent. Put 
that down there for safekeeping. And then four little 10 mil nuts hold the amplifier unit in. As you can see, it's all pretty wet in here. So when you undo those, remember that it's still connected. And this is the optical bus. So just be careful of that, slightly more fragile than other wiring. So then, so you can't do that with one hand easily. There we go. I just lift that up. And as a first look, just turn it over. So as you turn it over, you can see the water damage there. So that is 100% got water in the amplifier, which they don't like. So the next thing, the first one to take out would be the optical bus. So push the little bit down, take it out. Now you'll be able to see the flashing light. So that's the in. Now they're always marked. So when you look at that, if you can see that, you can see in and out. And that little white clip, if you pop that clip out carefully and then push that clip up a little bit, you can actually pull the optical cable out of this connector. It's gone off now. If I power up the stereo, so just press the button on the stereo and it come back to life and then start flashing again. So then, but this one, the optical bus is actually okay. But always take that one out first. Check them as you take them out. Might need to get a screwdriver to take these out. Or a little pick. Hang on. I should get a cameraman, really. There we go, that's that one popped. Again, tricky to do with one hand. But always check the pins, and then when we're completely out, we'll check the pins in there. But sometimes you have to replace some of the pins in the connectors if the corrosion's been there a long time, the water. What I might do is just put that there for a second. And then pop this out. That's not going to work. But anyway, so you pop the connectors out check all of the pins in the connector plug. If you've got any really badly corroded ones, you'll need to de-pin them out of the plug and just replace them, which you can buy from Land Rover with little bits of wire attached to them, so it's not a major issue. Um, also check any other connectors on the loom where the water's been. And then lastly, check for the source of the water leak. Um, which can vary, but yeah, you always need to fix the source, otherwise when you replace the unit, it will just fill up again. But yeah, so that's um, this one diagnosed. New um, amplifier, and it'll be good as new. Thanks for watching. Bye.